हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ टेक गैल एंड टुडे वी हैव करण विद अस सो पहला थॉट अपने को ये आया था कि अपने को अगर फॉरेन जाना है उधर काम करना है सो इट इज ओनली वाया माय टैक्स जो कॉलेज स्टूडेंट्स कर पाएंगे एंड आई हैव पोस्टेड अ वीडियो ऑन हाउ यू कैन डू इट सो इफ यू नॉट चेक दैट आउट मेक श्योर टू चेक दैट आउट लिंक विल बी द डिस्क्रिप्शन बट करण आज अपने को ये समझाएंगे कि बीइंग अ सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपर ही इज आल्सो अ फेलो गूगल समर ऑफ कोर्स स्टूडेंट मेंटी एंड ही इज करेंटली वर्किंग विद सर्न इन जेनेवा and he will be sharing his tips and tricks and how he got into and will be sharing the entire program so the program is off campus karan applied and he said that college does not matter being you are from anywhere in india you can just apply and you can get in so that karan do you mind it rousing yourself a bit yeah thank you for the brief introduction and nikhil uh, so about me i am karan and i am a i am an engineering graduate a computer science major from thapar institute of engineering and technology in patiala and over the course of my university i have tried to exp- explore this field of technology through uh, various channels like internships open source and uh, hackathons and uh, i also participated last year in google summer of code uh, that is i think with your batch itself and currently i am in uh, france uh, living in france and working as an open lab summer okay and that's a lot of thing karan and yeah i have seen your profile it i guess we had a similar thing like we did jishok in the same year itself and before that you know a lot of people i'm sure don't know what cern actually is so before you know if you can just tell us about what is cern and then we can shift to what is a pro- program about so first let's go with what is cern uh, so cern uh, the full form of cern is in french even i don't remember it properly i forget it a lot of times so loosely translated in english it's the european organization for nuclear research and uh, it is the one of the biggest and most renowned research institutes in the world and it has the biggest particle physics laboratory it is home to the large hadron collider which is quite famous and also the most interesting fact is that internet as we know it today the world wide web was actually created here back in i think 1989 by team bernersley okay so cern is basically mostly we can think like as a research lab right where people are working around uh, particle physics okay so yeah. now uh, if we can talk about the student program you know like initially if we just explain you know who can mm-hmm. apply and we can have this questions later on but about the procedure mm-hmm. how did you came to know about this exist and how did you proceed for that you know uh, so uh, before the summer student program let me uh, tell you about cern open lab this term open lab what it means so cern as a research institute has partnered with a lot of companies and uh, other research institutes and they have some joint uh, research and development projects and uh, every summer uh, around 30 to 40 of these projects uh, are proposed and they get selected and then comes into the picture this open lab summer student program uh, where students across the world apply and work on these selected projects so these projects can be either cern specific or can be proposed by the partner organizer i uh, came to know about cern when i was like going through uh, some uh, physics material and i came to know about this uh, large hadron collider which i just mentioned and then i looked through uh, did a little bit more of research and then back in i think my second year i discovered that there is something known as the open lab summer student program which is mainly uh, uh, oriented for a uh, computer science graduates okay. okay okay so i guess it is anyone can apply to the program right like it is open for all uh no there's there's quite a lot of eligibility criteria even if you uh, check the okay. website so some basic eligibility criteria are that first uh, you need to be either a bachelor student who has completed at least 3 years in university so you can uh, if you are you have a course like me which is a 4 year engineering course so you can either apply at the end of your 3rd year or at the end of your 4th year and during the uh, Uh, during the internship you should be enrolled uh, in a in a college and if you graduate between this program even then it's fine or you can be a master student basically uh, summarizing that i think you should be in most probably your 
final year like if you are in btech or if you are in dual degree course then you should you can be in fourth uh, year or fifth year yeah. and if you are in master mm-hmm. Uh, you can even be at the end, uh, end of your th- yeah basically exactly yeah, and anyone said, from yeah. india does not matter you know if your college is tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 anyone can just go and apply now let's move forward you know and if you can just enlighten us with the application process where there you know like essay rounds or did you also need to solve some questions or uh, where any assignment given to you contrary to what most people think uh, the application round isn't uh, that difficult it's just one uh, application a smart recruiters website which is widely used by companies around the world to hire you have to complete uh, the application a few prompts in that there is no interview and uh, the questions can be it starts with basic questions like your uh, name and contact information and your nationality then uh, some hr related questions for example your motivation to apply or any other message to the hiring manager that you might have and then uh, comes a little technical part so as far as i remember when i applied uh, there were three major questions so first is what domain are you interested in so in that you'll have to select from a drop down uh, it can be uh, mostly it is Uh, those domains that are more research oriented so machine learning uh, quantum computing uh, cloud computing so you have to select a few of those and then in the next section you will have to specify what got you interested in that field and preferably uh, if you have any work experience in that because uh, they really value if ha- you have actually written in code written code in the domain that you are applying for and then the following questions were about programming languages you had to select the programming languages that you are a uh, proficient in and what is your level of expertise and what kind of code you have written so you don't really have to provide an example of the code that you have written but uh, uh, it's strongly suggested that you be very descriptive and Uh, define everything that you have done in that specific uh, programming language and then i think there was another question about databases if you have experience working in certain databases so uh, that that is also like the similar thing so yeah i think these were all the hi- these were all the highlights and there were a few more questions but these are the ones that you need to focus on more and uh, Uh, the only advice that even the recruiter gave to all the selected students like mentioned what goes on behind the scenes they really value when someone takes time to define and be very you know elaborate on every single point on what they have done instead of just mentioning that wrote front end code in javascript so that is not that is how you get rejected so do not do that uh try to uh put some more effort into it and uh, yeah that was about the questions apart from that uh you will need some documents to apply so first of all it would be the most recent transcript now people think that your grades matter a lot and it might depending on what team is reviewing your application your grades might be uh more relevant to them but uh, some teams really don't uh, care about your grades so yeah your recent transcript then uh, of course your resume and uh, the resume should be like uh, try to maintain a very decent format uh, start with the experience then education uh, probably i can share the resume that i used to apply and we can put it in the description so resume and uh, yeah the most important thing letter of recommendation so they prefer uh, if you apply with two lors but you can also apply with one and uh, try to get the lors from university professors and it's it's not important and it can be from any uh, professors from any university uh, but uh, they actually really value if they if the lors are from university professors instead of a company that you might have worked in a startup 
so keep these things in mind but what are the perks of getting it yeah so so there is a stipend more like an allowance for uh, you to cover all your cost while living here in uh, switzerland and france so uh, i think i did not mention this but cern uh, the entire campus is situated on the Fr- swiss french border so the accommodation that they have booked for us it is on the french side while the office most of our offices are in the swiss side so uh, this area is quite expensive i would say so you are compensated fairly well and uh, about the compensation it is 90 swiss francs per day allowance which amounts to i think uh, 5600 uh, swiss francs over the period of okay. time the other perks include like a health insurance and uh, the flight ticket that you take from your residence to geneva which okay. is where cern is uh, that is also reimbursed completely has it been in, you know like you have been working as for a certain amount of time now so you know if you can mention a bit about your project yeah. because i'm pretty sure you must have signed an nda so you cannot tell exactly what is the project about and everything but a brief you know and how is you know working culture like you know how is the hierarchy in the organization every single student uh, gets assigned a supervisor so i think there are 30 of us in the open lab program and we each have one or maybe more supervisor and they are the ones to guide us they are really experts in their field and uh, you can go to them with any doubts related to your project or even otherwise if you have any doubts related to career or related to where should i go uh, in the weekend in europe so every doubt they will clear and uh, uh, there are a uh, certain lecture programs as well here so uh, weekly thrice there are lectures on topics like like today itself we had a lecture on machine learning and deep learning it was uh, organized by a by someone who worked as a senior engineer here at sun and is now a professor in a university in geneva so you really get to learn a lot from uh, industry experts okay okay sounds sounds pretty you know, interesting to me that you are getting into the particular country like you know getting on site hmm. working over there it feels different right Uh, and i'm pretty sure you are enjoying the entire experience yeah. in fact this is my uh, first time uh, doing an on site work all my internships and open source work have been remote up until this point so i'm glad it was here okay, and that sounds amazing you know like i i can feel that thing you know just uh, like mm. going to another country doing it over there meeting folks all around the world and actually doing it face to face feels different uh so you know like a lot of folks must be interested because people like me at least i want to go there and explore how things work and you know meet different have a different cultural shock maybe and enjoy the process so what are you know tips yeah. that you know applicants should have them in their mind because uh, as it might sound from what you said like you just need to fill up the application but i guess everyone is doing that like they must be trying to get in but there is a barrier mm-hmm. and there are some mistakes that people are doing one we can uh, simply you know identify is not writing small answers like as you said you know i just know how to code mm-hmm. in javascript i wrote with html sort of but they should be more specific for apart from that is there apart anything else that you know application can should keep in their mind while they filling up the form so one most important thing that i would like to say about this application process is that uh we were given the stats when there was the welcoming session and it was said that around 2000 people applied across the world for this specific position and only 30 got selected so you can see that around 1.5% is the acceptance rate it does not mean that people beyond 30 they were not good enough or they did not do enough work in college but the thing is luck plays an important role here uh, because it might be that you have done a lot of good work in your college but they do not have projects that they can assign to you because it does not match your tech stack or it does not match the domain that you have worked with so try not to get too attached and uh, just keep in mind a few tips so first like i said uh, elaborate on every single answer don't keep it a one liner or something this is not a not an opportunity that you specifically prepare for it comes over the years so i did not do anything separately for cern whatever i did in college all the internships and all the 
uh, open source work, GSOC and everything, all of that counts and that makes you uh, like that boosts your prof profile. So if you are still in your first or second year in college and you're currently not eligible, you will be at the end of your third year. Try to, uh, you know, uh, get into things like uh, try to try as many things as you can while you're at this stage so that later it helps you. And uh, again, uh, try to make contacts with uh, your university professors or professors around the world so that you get good LORs. And uh, yeah, basically that would be my tips for the aspiring applicants. Okay. So ultimately, you know, thanks a lot, Karan, for joining in. It was really good to have you. And I'm pretty sure that folks have learned about, you know, what is CERN, how they can apply, what are the perks of getting it, and what is the eligibility criteria. And I guess everything is pretty much clear to everyone. So I hope, folks, you will be applying and yeah. I guess more. Okay, and one more thing uh, before we end this. Uh, we, uh, towards the end of our project, uh, we have to present a report and a lightning talk in front of all the supervisors and interns so that reports for the previous uh, open lab summer students are available in public domain so try to go through that that will give you an idea on the type of projects that we could uh, work on here so we will again link it in the description box. okay and thanks Karan. so i will be mentioning Karan's socials in the description so do contact him ask him about anything you want he will be trying his best to answer you back so ultimately thanks a lot folks i hope you have watched the videos that i'm posting so make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on anything and bye bye